Howdy ho, fellow soldiers, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. Happy Thanksgiving Eve to you. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the history of this holiday and analyzing the somewhat bizarre anti-American animosity for Thanksgiving that's percolating in the culture. So pull up a chair at my table as we carve up some culture and slice up some learning. I'm Pastor Shane. I'll be your pilgrim today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> So around this time of year, you'll get a slew of think pieces from the woke schools that are filled with hand-wringing and consternation over the celebration of this holiday. It's sort of become its own special tradition. Everything from the New York Times and the horrible history of Thanksgiving to the Huffington Post and the truth about Thanksgiving, what they never taught you in school. You'll find all kinds of articles looking askance at Thanksgiving, and the predictable and banal criticisms are summed up nicely in one paragraph by Richard Schiffman, who says, While Thanksgiving's enthusiasts view it as a celebration of the boldness, piety, and sacrifices of the first European migrants to the American shores, the holiday's critics claim that it whitewashes the genocide and ethnic cleansing of indigenous people. Okay, so number one, just as we saw with Halloween, customs and practices are not static things and meaning changes over time. So even if the historical roots of the Thanksgiving celebration were tainted by war atrocities, and even if it were originally a celebration of conquest, that still doesn't mean that our modern observance is. Customs and practices are not static and meaning changes over time. When we gather together on Thursday and go around the table and share what we're thankful for, I don't think ethnic cleansing is going to make the list this year. But second of all, the history of Thanksgiving isn't tainted. Here's a pretty straightforward summary from the History Channel. In November 1621, after the Pilgrim's first corn harvest proved successful, Governor William Bradford organized a celebratory feast and invited a group of the fledgling colony's Native American allies, including the Wampanoago chief Massasoit. And most of what we know about that event comes from the Pilgrim chronicler Edward Winslow, who wrote, Our harvest being gotten in, our governor sent four men on fowling, that so we might after a special manner rejoice together after we had gathered the fruits of our labors. They four in one day killed as much fowl as with a little help beside served the company almost a week, at which time, amongst other recreations, we exercised our arms, many of the Indians coming amongst us, and amongst the rest their greatest king, Massasoit with some ninety men whom for three days we entertained and feasted, and they went out and killed five deer, which they brought to the plantation and bestowed on our governor and upon the captain and others. And although it be not always so plentiful as it was at this time with us, yet by the goodness of God we are so far from want that we often wish you partakers of our plenty. So, not a whole lot of genocide going on there. Recreations were mentioned, but no mention of ethnic cleansing. Now, were there atrocities carried out on Native Americans by European colonists in the early days? Sure. Uh, were there atrocities carried out on European settlers by Native American tribes? Also, yes. Were there atrocities carried out on Native American tribes by other Native American tribes? Again, yes. But Thanksgiving isn't commemorating that. It's commemorating a three-day feast in November 1621 with the pilgrims and Indians in which they had food and recreation and zero war crimes. And the official nationalization of the holiday came from Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War in which he put forth this proclamation. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do, therefore, invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. So Thanksgiving, according to Lincoln, was a day set apart for Thanksgiving and praise to God. No mention of gratitude for ethnic cleansing. 
It must have been an earlier draft. The truth is there's absolutely nothing nefarious about the historical commemoration or the nationalization of the holiday. But unlike some other holidays, it's uniquely American, and as such, Thanksgiving incurs the wrath and scorn of those who regard America as fundamentally and irredeemably founded in evil. As Richard Schiffman writes, if you happen to spend Thanksgiving in Plymouth, Massachusetts this year, you can choose between two public commemorations. You can watch the official parade, in which townspeople dress like pilgrims march to Plymouth Rock bearing blunder bushes and beating drums. Or you can stand on the top of Coles Hill with indigenous people and their supporters and fast in observance of what they call a national day of mourning in remembrance of the destruction of Indian culture and peoples. These two events represent radically different versions of American history. The official version, the one we learn in school, essentially starts with the landing of the Mayflower in 1620 in a small bay north of Cape Cod. In the native version, on the other hand, the appearance of the pilgrims on American shores marks the beginning of the end. So a national day of mourning, not because of the particular November harvest feast with the Mayflower pilgrims, but because Europeans eventually conquered the land. Okay. But if that's the problem, then isn't that a problem for all holidays in the country? I mean, the only reason we celebrate Halloween is because Europeans conquered the land. The only reason we celebrate Christmas is because Europeans conquered the land. The only reason we have national holidays at all is because we're a nation and became a nation through the usual means of war and conquest. The problem is not the three-day harvest celebration of the Mayflower Pilgrims with the indigenous peoples, and the problem is not with Lincoln's proclamation. The problem is America. Schiffman continues, while few would suggest that Thanksgiving should become the occasion for a yearly guilt trip, we would do well to remember the price the first Americans paid for European expansion into their territories as we sit around the bountiful table with our family and friends. Only by openly acknowledging the sins of our collective past is it possible to proceed toward a future that all Americans can feel thankful for. So it's true that few would suggest Thanksgiving should become the occasion for a yearly guilt trip, but that's precisely what Schiffman and others are doing. If not self-flagellation, then what exactly is the point? And what on earth does he mean by our collective sins? If he means sins we committed as a nation, well, first of all, we weren't a nation until 1776. That's about a century and a half removed from the Mayflower. So you're a little off from Thanksgiving, which is supposedly the topic. But second of all, how does national sin work exactly? My wife is French Dutch. Her people came into Ellis Island. They didn't migrate to this country until the early 1900s. So not super involved with the whole Trail of Tears thing. So is it all at the swearing-in ceremony that they become guilty of collective sins? You're not guilty of national sins until you become a citizen? It's weird that so many people want to be U.S. citizens. Man, they must really hate Native Americans. Now, maybe by collective sins, he doesn't mean sins of the nation. That'd be silly. He means ethnic sins, sins of a people group, Europeans specifically. Well, that's kind of messed up, too. I'm a proud American mutt. My ancestors were English, German, French, Dutch, even a little Blackfoot Indian. Looking through history, there's no shortage of war or oppression between one side of me and another. So I am both oppressor and oppressed, guilty and innocent. And that's not really unique for Americans, because we're a melting pot, and the ethnic lines are only going to be increasingly blurry over time. And the Bible says this, Parents are not to be put to death for the children, nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. You die for your own sins, not the sins of a nation and not the sins of others. We have plenty of guilt ourselves. We don't need to take on any more. And if you're approaching this holiday of Thanksgiving with flagellation and weeping and gnashing of teeth, well, then you're doing it wrong. Well, that'll do for today. Like, subscribe, follow. Tell me why you're thankful for Appropriate in the Culture. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. Music